Okay, so let's start. Welcome to this session in the what's new in the admin uh, view in, the, in LMS. So this is our second um, webinar. So the first one was done by Una who gave us a generic overview. If you missed that one, it, will, it is already available in, on the um, homepage, Teletima.com. So have a look there and you could watch it. So that gives you a generic overview. So for the next foreseeable sessions all the way up until end of September, every couple of weeks or so, we're doing a deep dive session with one of our uh, experts here from Talent Team and they've picked an area each to, to go through. So today, we're doing a deep dive into items with Oksana, who's going to take us through. She is uh, an LMS consultant here. She focuses on LXP a lot, uh, but today she's here to talk about the items and things that have changed around that entity. Um, I'll let her introduce the topic herself for just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, I will be moderating. That means if you've got questions, please feel free to type them into the chat or the QA section. I'll keep an eye on that. Some questions, as much as we can, we'll try and answer as we go. We will have some time for questions at the very end. Um, and if for any reason we don't come to your question at all, we do aim to try and get back to you in some other way afterwards. So hopefully all of you uh, will get your answers uh, in some way by the end of it. Um, so please feel free to pop, pop your questions in the chat or the QA. Um, without further ado, I will leave it to Oksana uh, to take us through items. Thank you. Thank you, Alice. Thank you. Uh, thank you everyone for joining and taking this time to attend this session. I hope you're all, all well. Uh, so as Alice uh, introduced uh, this session today, we are having a deep dive into item entity and I'm going to talk you through uh, all the changes uh, on the on the item record and uh, everything associated with it. So um, I will show you a few slides just in the beginning and then I'll be using the system and just talking you through it. And um, I'd like to mention that I have my second screen here with the notes. So sometimes I'll be referring to those because it's um, impossible to remember all the ter terminology changes. So in case you see me looking away, uh, I'm looking at the second screen. So um, let's start with uh, a few updates. So if you have attended UNA session before, you uh, are uh, familiar and you, you are familiar by now with all the key dates. So uh, the first half 2020 release has gone into preview on 10th of April and it's now in production. Uh, both Flash and HTML5 admin interfaces are running now concurrently until the second half of uh, this year release and uh, it goes into production on, in November when uh, it will become your default uh, user interface and you won't be able to switch back to Flash. So as you know, um, the entire um, admin UI rework has been associated with the flash deprecation in major browsers and uh, here are two components that I'd like to emphasize in this session. So it's been done um, obviously so that um, admin as admin UI was based on flash uh, we had a dependency here and it was important to update those elements and second is um, related to online content. So um, I know that a lot of customers still have content uh, which is running based on Flash uh, and it's now the best time to revise and look at that content and get it updated with help of uh, instructional designers or um, uh, in-house or externally. So it's a good time to take a look at um, online content. So uh, key information. Um, you will see it in the system now. What has changed is that, remember previously when you uh, were about to create an item, you were presented with the wizard, um, with item classifications, uh, instructor lat, online, uh, blended and other. So uh, what changed in this um, release uh, now, instead of using that wizard, you're presented with a form and the classification is by default set to other. Uh, once you complete the form, the item gets created and based on the associations you built within that item. So for example, if you add an agenda, uh, the item becomes ILT instructor lat, or if you use online content, it will become online. If you use combination of both agenda and online, it will become blended. And if you don't um, change those components, it will still 
stay as other and you can use it for those types of items. So for example, task checklist. Uh, quite a, a big topic here is related to item revisions as you probably seen already. Um, so uh, what SAP has uh, introduced in this release is that if an online item has been completed, uh, administrators no, a, no longer able to add, remove or move the online content. So basically change its structure. But um, SAP has listened to the customer feedback and they are going to uh, change this. So currently, uh, if you go into new admin UI and you create an online item uh, with online content and it's completed by users, you will see the message that you have to revise the item and you can't change the structure. But this will change soon in July 2020. SAP will apply a patch to allow uh, admins to uh, add, remove, or move online content, and you will just see the warning message saying that um, it's advised to revise the item, but you still will be able to perform that function. And I think it's a good thing. So um, you will be able to test that soon. And um, of course, you are still able to do any um, replace the content object. If you, for example, have some minor changes, let's say title or any typos, and you can do that as well. Um, we are running a separate session on item revisions, so I'll cover it as we go through the item record today. But uh, if you want uh, to know more details, so I would, <coughs> excuse me, I would really recommend you attend our session on revision, uh, which will take place on the 6th of August, where uh, my colleague John will take you through it uh, in more details. Okay, so some key terminology changes. Um, you probably are familiar with those already, but there will be more terms on the item records. So scheduled offering uh, are now called classes. Domain is called security domain. Um, some of the key ones, so evaluations are now surveys, uh, requests are class requests, catalogs are libraries. So segments are agenda template. And if you want to add a segment, it will be called add time slot. Um, and in terms of the item specific um, fields, so length is now called duration. So they're all making sense. It's quite easy to understand, but uh, some of the longer descriptions uh, uh, sometimes it, it might be tricky to recognize, but uh, eventually you'll get used to it. So you can still keep two admin UIs in parallel and just review those records. So. Um, a few to note here, so minimum and maximum registration uh, is now minimum and maximum enrollments. Uh, registration threshold days uh, is called prevent multiple class registration interval. So remember this field uh, allows you to restrict users registering for uh, an offering within a set period of time. So it's still the same, uh, no changes here, just the terminology. Autofill registration, so if you enable the waitlist, it's now called auto-enroll from waitlist, so it's uh, easier to understand. Uh, enable user request, user can request the class. Um, learning his recording learning event is now called learning history or adding to history on the online content objects. Chargeback uh, is now called purchasing if you're using commerce. Um, expires within the catalog settings, remove from the library on. Uh, days from launch to expiration, reset user progress after inactivity. So this setting, uh, in case you were using it on the uh, uh, on the item, so this setting resets uh, user progress on the item after the set amount of days, uh, and the APM automatic process runs to clean it up, and the user has to complete the item again. Um, right. So um, and some of the uh, details on the um, documentation I'll cover later. So let us now go into the system. Apologies, I'm just dragging it here. Let me just minimize this. Okay. So um, just to remind you, how do you find the new admin UI? What are the entry points? So um, now both your uh, test instances and production have been updated and you can find uh, the tile learning administration on your homepage. Um, some customers who previously didn't want it to be shown uh, 
they have hidden it, but now we really recommend you to take this time and uh, get used to the navigation. So you can access it through here. You can access it in the old admin UI. There is a, a link in the, um, in the message, which will take you to the new UI. And um, uh, you can add the custom navigation here as well. So uh, if you have navigation to learning admin, this will take you to old UI and you can add it to take you to the new UI. So I will use tile for now and we will land on the new interface. Um, and let's now create an item. So where do you find the item? So in Una session uh, previously, um, you, you've seen and been taking through some of the major changes in terms of navigation and just to recap on this, so learning activities, so all the key functionality has been lifted here um, and you can find that uh, everything what, what you had before uh, in the horizontal navigation bar, it's all presented in this tree um, type of hierarchy. So the first one is items. So if I click on it, um, I'll land on the screen you are used to see. So those screens haven't really changed, but the entity um, has changed. So in here I have ability to enter the full screen mode and that's what I will do. Uh, as you have noticed, the recents and bookmarks are not there yet. SAP plans to introduce recents, but bookmarks uh, are not planned for the short term and SAP advises to use the browser uh, bookmarks. If you are authenticated, you will be able to uh, pretty much use them on the browser, but it's not planned for short term, unfortunately. Um, so now I will just enter the full screen mode uh, so that it's bigger. If I add a new item, so remember previously you were taken to wizard, now I have the form. Uh, and here I need to complete some key key fields in order to create my item. So the first one, if you have several locales enabled, um, you'll have uh, ability to select it. Then I'm presented with item types. So all of these fields uh, or some of them will be uh, obviously customer specific. Um, yeah, okay. Yes, that's right. Sorry, I'm looking at the questions. Productionize is changed to finalize revision. That's right. And I'll take your questions in the end of the session. So I'll leave uh, 15, 20 minutes. Um, okay, Alice, if you could uh, keep an eye on questions and someone raise the hand as well, that'd be great. So I'll continue yeah, with this. Sure. Yeah, yeah, thank you. <laughs> okay, so um, let's now create um, uh, an online item uh, and here I select item type course. My item ID is auto-generated but it can be uh, populated manually depending on how it's set in your environments um, and what's, what's your policy. So for revision date I have here um, US time so I'll use uh, the previous day uh, revision number. So for the revision number if you're creating the new, revi uh, the new item um, again, you will have your own kind of policy uh, for that. Uh, if it's a first revision, you can just put a number one, but if you have any specific um, uh, policy, how, how, you, how you or procedure, uh, any convention, you, you can apply it here as well. So I just put the first um, revision and the title I have here my um, Title, so I'll just call this project management basics. So you can see that by default classification is set to other and it's grayed out. So once we uh, complete this form, uh, the item classification will be other and it will change uh, after I associate agenda or online content object. So source ID uh, here you again uh, based on your uh, configured references, you decide if it's external, internal, if it's any provider's content. Um, I'll leave it in public, but uh, it's best to place it in the relevant domain. Uh, delivery method, so as I'm creating an online course, I will pick an online. Um, assignment type, again, based on your specific customer assignment types, I'll say that it's optional. Approval process, so these fields, they are 
all here by default now um, and you don't have to complete all of them but it's uh, important to complete the mandatory fields which have this asterisk sign um, so I don't want to associate any approval process so I'll just leave it as it is um, again um, safety related approved um, all these fields are here um, by default and um, you you don't have to complete it if you um, don't use those fields and um, I'm keeping an eye if this is going to change in future so we don't have that information yet uh, active is checked by default so if this item is created as active auto enroll from the wait list user can add to learning history so um, uh, as it's online I don't check this manager can add so uh, all of these are related to um, ILT items create date I can populate it as well um, but I don't have to so it's not a mandatory field um, description comments so here I enter my description and um, any comments again that's visible to admins so I click add and I land on the uh, item entity record. So what's new here? Um, it, it, it probably looks too completely new, but um, it's quite easy to use and navigate once you use it a few times. So uh, all the most important uh, elements, uh, such as item classification, uh, item type, revision date and time status, uh, has been lifted to the header here um, and you can also find actions here as previously um, in a similar uh, corner so and uh, you have an ability to pin this header by pressing this pin button uh, or you can unpin it and uh, basically collapse it once you're working with the uh, with the fields and the uh, related tabs so um, yeah, let's keep it for now um, and on this horizontal navigation bar here you are presented with the item details page which is uh, previously your main um, entity where you populate the details and then the rest of the tabs here are uh, called entity tabs or which you configure uh, in the record configuration and um, there is a limitation in this release uh, by default uh, all the um, entity tabs from related related more show irrespective of your configuration um, this will change uh, uh, soon uh, there will be um, a patch um, applied to fix it uh, in July or August basically before the new release and what you need to mind here is that previously those uh, related related more tabs they were configured uh, in the um, configuration in the uh, and uh, now it's called entity configuration record configuration now um, you, you still can do it but the access for admins to these tabs are uh, driven by permissions so it's no longer the config but it's it is permissions. so you can uh, add and remove permissions for admins to see these tabs and they will see only those tabs that they have access to so here is an action for you remove um, review the permissions that you currently have assigned to your admin roles um, uh, in order to make sure that they have access to the relevant tabs um, and also, I've got a couple of um, couple of questions I think would be relevant to just answer here yeah. when we're mm -hmm. in this section absolutely um, so when you were creating that new item why are so few fields required to create an item even revision date is not required as shown here or title so the question is really about the form itself and what you need to enter as a minimum required fields and could, could they be added to yeah so currently it's not really configurable and um, there there isn't any information as such but uh, so this this form is either going to stay this way or there will be a possibility to edit it so that's something that uh, we are expecting uh, more information in the new release so watch, watch out for that 
Thank you. Um, there's also a question, with the new form for item creation, can custom fields be added to that screen? If we have made some additional field system required, can those be added? Yeah, so again, it's the same, um, the same answer. So we are waiting for the confirmation on that. The form might stay the same, but uh, in, in order to populate custom fields, you, you do it um, on the item details page here. So it's right at the bottom. So it might not be possible to add it. It might stay standard, but um, those additional fields might be removed. So it's something that uh, we'll see if it changes in the second release. Perfect. Really good um, question. Yeah, really generic question. Can the support tab on the side, can that be removed? <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay. Uh, so that's actually uh, the, uh, yeah, so it's it's a SAP support. So you can just uh, search for any terminology or any support for entities or uh, any functionality. Um, it is there by default. Um, I we, we can't really um, add it as far as I know. Um, yeah, yeah, it's a good one. I didn't really pay attention to it, but um, okay. yeah, I'll I'll take a look at this anyway. You can remove it, but I I I think it's pretty much standard. Um, but um, we. We'll take a look at it and uh, I, I'll send the uh, presentation and let you know if that's possible. Okay, um, any other questions? Or yeah, there's a, mm -hmm. yeah, there's a couple about the permission to use um, the comments fields. Uh, they're sort of located towards the bottom of the page. The question is, can permissions to use um, and comments fields be moved further up um, for the admin's attention? Okay. Um, in terms of when it comes to the personalized, so it's personalization of the fields essentially. So previously you were able to um, shuffle those fields around and uh, personalize the view for yourself and for example um, put some fields uh, at the top and some basically change the order. So it's no longer supported. Um, SAP removed that uh, ability for admins to do that and the fields order is to remain standard, unfortunately. So, okay. so yeah. that's unfortunately a no to that one. Uh, that was all the questions currently here. So please do continue mm -hmm. and I'll disrupt you again if I... Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, sure. Okay, so let's just go through the item details page um, and I will probably unpin this and uh, minimize the header. Um, yeah, so what I wanted to add here is that once you go through those tabs, you can just use this arrow to scroll through them. You will see currently all the tabs and uh, you can also see them uh, in this drop down uh, right here. So let's go back to the item details and here you can um, basically populate your titles and uh, descriptions in different locales if you have them enabled um, and uh, you populate duration so for example uh, this is three hours course my delivery method which I can change here as well or add new so it's the same as in previous um, or in the current uh, old admin UI uh, source field, credit hours, CPD uh, hours. So all of these fields are staying the same and you can use them if you'd like, uh, if you use credit hours or CPD hours. Um, now, so uh, thumbnail image is now called image. If you want to have a specific um, image, you can change it here. Otherwise the uh, standard global ones apply, which are configured um, globally. Um, content contacts email. So again, that's the same. So you can put here um, an email address of your L and D professional handling this course um, for reference. Um, I can just put my email address. Domain you can change here as well. Uh, and in this view, uh, you instead of drop down, you get this toggle. So for several records, uh, you instead of drop down, get the toggle, which is much more convenient to use. So status by default is active. Um, next registration settings. So this is applicable to uh, ILT items. So I will not 
touch it uh, for online. Um, prevent multiple class registration intervals. So that's uh, the threshold registration threshold setting. Again, I will leave it as it is, as it applies to ILT. Uh, user can self-register uh, by default is set to uh, yes, it based on your global settings. Manager can register others. So I'm having online items, so that's not really relevant. Um, Auto-enroll from waitlist, um, again, um, you can change the setting for ILT. Um, and here I have online settings. So if I, for example, have blended learning and I have um, agenda or uh, instructor lat uh, parts and I have an online item, so the setting will can apply. Uh, you can uh, basically uh, set it to uh, yes, so that uh, users who are not registered to uh, ILT or set it to no, basically can't access online content or set it to yes so that they can uh, access online content. Uh, approval process, again, you can change it here. Uh, here we have the drop down. Uh, course ratings, so if it's enabled, if you're using it, uh, you can set the toggle to yes uh, for users to be able to rate the content. Um, in the assignment section, so we have the same um, options, the same field here. Uh, previously on the old admin UI and uh, usually we don't really utilize it as such because it's uh, recommended to use curricula for uh, assigning even one uh, item. So the, this is basically for um, associating with training, uh, but it's best to use curricula for that. So uh, this will be left, uh, I'll, I'll not really populate it now. Uh, assignment type, you can change it if you'd like. Completion, so um, these are again uh, global settings that you have configured. Uh, if user can uh, record uh, or add to learning history, uh, if they can record completion or if manager can record completion for the user. Um, so you can set toggle to no if you don't want it, but uh, defaults will be taken from your global settings and certificate templates. So if you have uh, uh, certificates, if you're using them and you have several templates configured, uh, admins can pick the relevant one from the dropdown here. Um, right, so creation date. Um, creation date is not mandatory field, but it's recommended to use it. Uh, revision date, as soon as you populate it in the form, uh, you no longer can uh, change it and you have to have a uh, revision date populated uh, for tracking purposes. Uh, now custom fields they have here a separate section now so uh, here we just have one uh, for an example let's say compliance related and I put it to no you can have um, various uh, custom fields and uh, various numbers of, of, of them as well. And uh, just to make it clear here, uh, you know that comments are only visible to admins, users can't see them. And um, now we have the header here, which uh, specifies that, highlights that it's only administrative use only. So any comments, uh, anything that you want to communicate to users, you can uh, put here and you can also see that it's 2000 characters uh, remaining. Um, so other fields approved um, and approval date, these are not mandatory fields. Uh, if you are using them, uh, this is really related to your own administration of the items. Um, uh, for example, in uh, in validated uh, syst systems or more uh, regulated industries, if you have an admin who needs to review and approve, you can use those fields and uh, use the approval date as well, approved by. Um, so these are fields that can be utilized, but these are not mandatory and you can remove them from the record configuration if needed. Uh, safety related is one of those fields as well. So it's an optional field and if you're using it, it, it can be on the record. Uh, right, and uh, as it's, um, uh, other, we have order settings, but it doesn't apply to any other items. So I'll just uh, save my settings here and uh, I will show you how the item classification changes 
uh, if I make this content online. So uh, in order to make this uh, item online, I will go to online content section and I will grab my content object ID, which I have here. So I'll just search it's the same menu. I just need to get my ID in my content object and I give it a title. So it's project management basics. Okay, so um, now this is slightly different view and uh, SAP has enhanced the navigation and uh, removed the separate several windows that we had previously. So that's uh, much easier to set um, and you find all the settings uh, with multiple tabs, but under one window, which is quite um, useful. So, um, and instead of uh, several windows, you can just uh, navigate, click on the settings and set, set it all. Uh, here. So here I do the same settings, nothing changed here as such, only the terminology. So the way the um, the way the fields are uh, worded, skip content structure, page on launch. So that's an option if you uh, want to enable it. Reset user's progress after inactivity. So that's what we talked about uh, previously. That's the uh, field if you want to reset user's progress, set the amount of days APM will run and a uh, user will have to start uh, the content again. So uh, it's not mandatory field. You can just leave it blank as you would uh, previously. Um, right, and once we complete this, so here I have my um, content object and I can obviously add several content objects and I can create folders, uh, the same functionality as previously. And if I have several uh, content objects, uh, I can also force uh, completion in sequence. So um, if I would have a second one, I can use complete content in sequence. So this, this is all the same. Allow uh, assessment review. So if you have uh, assessment and exam associated, you can uh, you can set it. Uh, you can allow users to review uh, their answers while they are in the session. And completion. So I want to add. Uh, so this terminology changed again. Add to history on completion of all content or um, previously mark complete on uh, all content object completion. Uh, completion status. So all of these fields are the same. Um, AICC max normal 99. So again, that's populated by default number of objects you can have for, of AICC type. Um, so user can review completed content from history. Uh, by default, it's on. So users, if it's online item, you can uh, they can go in and just complete or review the content again. Um, and here uh, we have our content object. So um, mastery score, uh, usually within SCORM, um, you, you have it in build. So again, this field, if you haven't used it in the past, um, you might not want to use it now. Add to history on pass, add to history on failure. So the same fields were there before, record uh, successful Oh, completion uh, um, on successful completion or uh, on, on, on failure as well. So uh, all these fields, there are no changes, only the terminology changes. Okay, so um, I have an ability here to um, add another content object. Um, and just as an example, I'll do that. So you can see the structure. Okay, so, um, or I, I can also create um, another folder um, I, and then I can um, force the sequence as well. Um, so for example, PM, that's what I should have done. Yeah, so that's a folder and I'll just add my other content object here. So 
So I'll remove this one. So you can see that you can use this um, uh, icons here in order to um, add it. Uh, so you can add folder or you can add exam content object content package. So all of these options are the same or you can remove uh, them as well. Um, you can as well um, collapse or um, expand. And now I'll just save it. Okay, so now we have new item and um, as long as it's not completed, I can make changes to it in this release. Uh, as soon as it gets completed, I will not be able to change the structure, as I said, to add or remove uh, content objects or change the order. Uh, and I will see uh, the message at the top um, that I can't do it and the item needs to be revised. Um, it will be uh, changed. There is a question here from, from two different people actually asking the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, what, what are order settings? Um, is that something new? Order settings in the content objects, you mean? I or think this was asked potentially even earlier as well, possibly about the item. Ah, okay, on the item details. All right. Okay, so uh, yeah, let me just go back. So the order settings is related to the other uh, item classification type. So, um, and that's related to if you, if you use task checklist, but this, as if you are using other item classification, uh, that field will, will disappear. So now as we have uh, online item classification, we no longer have that uh, field here. So it's related to the other um, item type. Okay. The other question, going back to content where you were at, um, mm -hmm. the question is, what are the benefits of creating new folders on online content versus just stacking in content objects? Yeah, the benefits are that you can force the uh, completion order. So if you, for example, want user to complete it in the specific order, uh, let's say this content object first and this second, if you, if you want to force the order, you need to use folders. If you don't use folders, then the user has... Uh, basically freedom to complete the content objects in the order that they would like. Okay, thank you. There's no further questions at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, if you want, you can navigate to details of the content object by just clicking on that arrow sign and in the new admin UI, as you can see, I use the browser um, back functionality so you can um, easily easily use uh, that as well. So uh, just for convenience, you can immediately navigate to content object if you would like. So there are no more uh, changes here as such, uh, apart from the terminology and just layout, um, how, how it is uh, configured. Now, um, if I have, would, if I would have completed this item, um, I would see the message and um, just for the purpose of time, I have here another item I have created, um, which I will show you the message, how it will look like. Yeah, so I have recorded completion for this item for several users, and that's the message that would appear, um, uh, prompting you to revise um, the item because you can't um, actually uh, change the structure so you can't really uh, add new you just uh, have the same settings in terms of online um, generally when it comes to revisions uh, it's recommended to revise content if you actually change the content as such and also if you're are in a regulated industry and you some strict policies apply to you and you are for example governed by some external uh, bodies which really track um, how, how you uh, administer and um, revise the items. So in, in those regulated industries, for example, life sciences or pharma, uh, quite often you have stricter rules which apply to revisions. And if the content is, is new, you have to revise the item. So it's kind of general rule and uh, um, general advice from SAP, but as I said, in July, uh, SAP will apply a patch uh, and give admins an ability to still make modifications to the content structure and add and remove content objects. So there will be just a warning message instead um, 
uh, I we don't know yet the wording, but essentially it will just say that it's you can revise the item, but you still can make those changes. If if it's uh, not really a major change to a content object, um, uh, or if it's just a title change, you can still replace uh, that content object by clicking uh, Edit, and you can go in um, and replace replace it to a new one, for example, similar one but with just some minor change, um, or you can actually change it to um, a completely different one. So that's also an option. So again, that's where your internal policies when it comes to revisions um, would apply. But you technically can replace and you will be able to um, replace items, uh, content objects. Right, so um, I would like to leave us some time for questions and I'll try to finish in five, seven minutes so you can um, ask those questions. Um, and... Yeah, there is one question at the moment in the Q&A. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. If there's any change in prerequisites and substitute addition and removal settings? Mm -hmm. there, there is no change to functionality when it comes to substitutes, prerequisites um, or any other tabs or here so it all stays the same uh, there are only some uh, minor terminology changes um, when it comes to some of these steps but the functionality is the same and when the, when it comes to revisions the um, the uh, uh, functionality is again the same so uh, you're taken to the uh, revision assistant um, and you're taking through the same options and um, so yeah, it's it's exactly the same. And if, for example, you need to replace an item within the curriculum and use the substitutes, um, you would need to use the revision tool and not productionize the new revision until you make that substitute change. Uh, and only after making the change, you you would make it um, you would make it as a new revision. Um, so you would finalize that revision. But my colleague will talk and take you through this in more details in the next session. Um, in August, so you can subscribe to it, or register for it on our website. Okay, any other questions in relation to online items or any of the settings here? Uh, no, there was a comment just made uh, to, uh, about those contact object folder uses as well, just to kind of help further that answer you gave. Uh, whilst you can sequence them without folders, if you have a lot of content objects, it's an it's a option to kind of present it nicely in folders for the user to view as well. So it's not just a yeah, massive yeah. Of course. object, it kind of helps to, of course. to structure that view into chapters. Yeah. Or... Yeah, 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 absolutely. Yeah, of course. Yeah, it's just the, yeah, yeah, of course. There is a question, um, how do we raise it with SAP? I'm, I'm guessing if, uh, if you have questions, issues, suggestions, complaints, <laughs> new ideas with, with this new change, how, how, do, how do people approach SAP with all of this? Mm -hmm. So um, SAP monitors the community. So uh, there will be a link uh, in the presentation to the main page where all the documentation is uh, published and uh, there are a lot of customers commenting on that as well so they're monitoring that feed and um, as well I believe you can uh, raise a request on the influence portal as a customer um, and suggest change so both of the uh, avenues should be uh, available to you yeah I absolutely would like to pressure that point as well because SAP are incredibly keen on getting feedback for this new release because it is a big one it changes everybody's life day to day um, and we're all human so if you do have suggestions questions feedback I'm sure they will be more than happy to hear from you so that if there are any patching or changes to be done in the future to, to make this better for you then they definitely want to know about it yeah absolutely yeah and I would definitely recommend to you um going into community if you haven't done so uh, already and um, uh, giving feedback on any of the functionality uh, that you've seen and uh, using the influence portal as well that um, we don't have access to but you should as a customer. Yeah. Uh, just mm -hmm. 
quick one. Um, so Lisa, just yes, we will share all of these uh, presentation materials with you. Our marketing person is going to send it out to all of you beyond this um, session so that you can definitely use it within your organization if you would like to. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. So just a question, can you show us how to create an instructor-led course? Should we add at yeah. agenda level? Exactly, yeah, that was my uh, next point and apologies, uh, I've taken some time to, quite a lot of time to talk you through the online item. Um, so I'm now on the ILT uh, uh, item. So in order to create it, you follow the same process uh, using the same form which would default to other item classification type and once you uh, create an item it still stays other but you need to navigate to agenda template uh, which previously was called segments so um, and create basically uh, your uh, structure whether it's one day course uh, or uh, two days so that's where you uh, create your slots so I have created um, uh, one slots uh, sorry one slot here and i can modify it here um, so if you have ilt as you know you would need to create a class a scheduled offering uh, which you can do it from this actions menu uh, but in order for this other item classification to become instructor lot you need to create uh, agenda template and here you define just the basics the amount of days and times that this course takes to deliver uh, and here I've put six hours and it's one day course if I, if I would have more I would do that and I can as well copy uh, time slots in the same manner um, or manage equipment uh, once you save you get to uh, edit as you can see and you can add an additional day for example day two and I would say day two duration uh, six hours location type so location type these are the references that you have globally configured so this is not specific class as such that you will define on the scheduled offering or class but here you just kind of build a skeleton so the change to this is that previously as you remember you had two views um, in a in segments a list and calendar calendar view is no longer supported as the as SAP has switched to this type of hierarchical tree navigation so um, can't really drag and drop those segments anymore in a calendar view just have to use the edit and uh, add time slots or um, copy time slots as you could uh, previously do as well so this is the change when it comes to how to create instructor led just do it via agenda template and that's how um, it looks in terms of the uh, segments changes any questions with regards to this there is one uh, will the duration field of the item be auto populated from the duration given in time slot in agenda template Okay, if it will basically in inherit it and populate it in the item details. Uh, yes. Yeah, so yes, it will basically uh, take it based on the segments or the time slots that you create. Yeah. So the no, short answer. No more questions it. at the moment. Mm -hmm. Okay, so just to mention. I won't cover the blended item as you you've seen the key um, item types uh, online and instructor lot as, as we covered it now so if you need to create a blended item you basically use uh, agenda template and you add uh, online content as well so that will create your blended item and there's no change uh, to the other item classification so if you're using it for any documents or uh, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll attend to questions. Uh, if you use it for documents or standard operating procedures or task checklists, there's no change as such. It's, it's, it's exactly the same. You have to create, for example, uh, your tasks, then you have to add them. So uh, unfortunately for uh, the purpose of time, I, I won't be covering it as we are focused mainly on the changes this time, but uh, feel free to just go into your environment and uh, 
replicate all the scenarios and create those uh, different item classifications as needed. Yeah, um, I've seen that there's another question or Sarah has raised Sarah her hand. Sarah has raised her hand. So Sarah, if I'm going to um, allow you to talk, would you like to ask your question? Hello. Here we go, Sarah. Can you Hi, hear Sarah. Me? We can hear you. Yeah. Okay, good. So I want to just ask you one thing. Uh, uh, now, if you move into blended item and then you remove an online content, the classification go back to instructor led. Yeah, it will change. Yeah. Change back. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And one more thing I, I'd like to mention to you. So, if, for example, you create an uh, item and you want it to be um, online. Uh, but you don't want to add the content object yet because, for example, you are finalizing it, haven't imported it yet. So uh, recommendation would be to go into online content and uh, set the settings here so that the system knows that you are going to create an online item so that the um, classification changes to online. Uh, if, you, if it still stays other um, and... So basically, if you if you need to add that content object later, you need to uh, make this uh, online uh, um, content object settings. You need to select them here, even if you don't add it. Yeah, and it will change from blended to instructor lot if you if you remove it. Thanks. Okay, I'm going to mute okay. you again. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, let me know if there are any other questions. There are no questions at the moment. Okay. If you do think of questions uh, afterwards and when you, when you perhaps try this out, of course, uh, you can always approach us. There, there is a lot of information to be had on the community and amongst the KBAs and there's links and uh, SAP have been very, very helpful. They've produced a lot of documentation. So it's definitely there for you to read if you log in and have a look at the resources. Um, but should you have any questions, then of course, uh, you're always welcome to approach us as well, especially if you're currently engaged with us, then definitely use us to answer questions on this as well. We're happy to help. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And as Alice said, that there is already a documentation if you haven't had a chance to look at it. There is a SAP transition guide. Uh, there are uh, label changes available. There is navigation document and entity field changes as well, uh, which is available on community. I put the link right here. Um, and another thing I'd like to highlight is that SAP Success Factors Job 8 will be available. Uh, the date was announced uh, as 6th of July. So after that, they will be um, uh, published on the portal. Uh, and this will be generic uh, SAP SF guides, as you know. So if you have your um, custom Job 8 created internally, uh, you can uh, start customizing it in terms of terminology because that's already uh, there and uh, if you have any screenshots you can also start uh, taking them um, uh, to basically save time and prepare for production so we would really recommend you to start uh, looking at it now and of course you can utilize the standard job aids uh, later on once they are published in July and to remind you of the uh, release date. So the second half uh, 2020 release will go into uh, preview environments uh, on the 16th of October and it will become uh, a default UI in the November 20th um, and uh, it will uh, the dates always uh, slightly differ for validated instances. So uh, for validated instances, it will be first half um, 2020 release applied um, uh, on 4th of December. So there's more information uh, again on the same community page. Um, and 
um, you can uh, always refer to it. And um, if you have access to um, uh, SAP support portal um, and uh, a launch pad, there are a number of KBAs published. Uh, there's one master KBA uh, which uh, is mentioned here. So here you have the ID, uh, which has all the hyperlinks to all the KBs uh, with entity changes and uh, many more. Uh, there is as well one KBA with the limitations and known issues list. So it's mentioned here as well. So if you have access to the portal, please have a look. Um, it's quite helpful. Um, as we mentioned, there will be more sessions that we will run uh, over summer. So uh, feel free to go uh, to our website, talentteam.com, under events. We published all the sessions there. You can register right now. Uh, there will be session on class or scheduled offering. Um, there will be as well session um, on revision, uh, on how to um, edit the uh, um, um, the the message or basically the um, the the tile the default tile here um, in the admin new admin UI uh, which one one of my colleagues will run um, so you you know that you can customize this intro message and uh, so that, that will be another session. So please have a look and uh, I encourage you to register for those. If you have any more questions, uh, please reply to uh, the email that we'll send out with the, uh, with the slides and we will pick those up and answer. Last chance to ask any questions, if there are any. There's no more questions at no. the moment. Okay. Uh, thank you so much, Oksana, for this. I'm sure we all found it very useful. Um, the next session up is on the 9th of July, and that's our colleague Sadaf who's going to talk about the user entity. So that's the next one up in this series. Um, so I'm just going to have a quick look if there's anything else. No. Okie doke. So thank you for joining. I'm going to finish this now, and hopefully we'll see you on the next one again. Thank you. Thank you thank very you. much. Bye. Bye.